YouTube. Well, seeing as this was meant to be base week, uh, so I'm doing another one, another base one. I just don't want to put a base video out every day because some people are like weirdos. Don't get the base. Duh. Base is awesome. So this is, um, I've just put this back together again. This is actually JPAX number 15. Um, uh, so at the very, very start, I took over a few guitars to get painted. Um, like about a week in or something like that. So first guitar I did was JPAX 1. It was a strap, which wasn't mine. And then I went over the following day or something with this bass, a Flying V in bits, and the Washburn Raven. No, this this bass, the Flying V in bits, and the wee red bass uh, to get painted. So this is a Yamaha RBX. Um, it's written on the back of the head, it's not what model it is. Um, it's a RBX374. Um, so this is the original neck with a burst truss rod thing. I actually think I snapped the truss rod in this one, actually. So that, that's that's why this one has taken so long to surface. Um, so we've got the only active base I own. So we've got two big Yamaha humbuckers, a volume bass treble and a pickup blender um as i said this does not have the original neck on it this is actually from a stag you can tell by the wee sort of circular hole in the headstock i'm going to get jade gent to even i think maybe just paint something in the, in the wee hole maybe um just to finish this off I, I i've never really wanted this bass really i got this actually the same time when i bought my aria zzb back uh, off after having not owned it for 20 years after I traded it into Merchant City Music and I just happened to see it on um, Facebook Marketplace like the day after or I think it was even actually the evening of the Andertons video where they were looking up their original guitars um, you know, I don't know it was a Yamaha GX was Chapman's one and uh, I found the bass not the same one not, not a similar colour or a similar model the same one because it's got like there's so many things on it that are just so obviously mine. Um, it had, uh, it had a, a poker chip on it and gold knobs, and it only I only ever had three neck bolts. So the guy's like, "Ah, oh, no, 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 looked at it. There was like three silver neck bolts and a gold one, or three gold ones and a silver one. It's the same one with dents in it, and that I remember putting in it. Uh, but so this is a these stag bases are really good actually. That Telecaster's made of the short scale one. If you ever see a short scale one. I'll buy it off you, because the necks on them are fantastic. Um, it's not as wide as the Yamaha neck, so I actually cut bits of metal shims down either side out of that uh, the aluminium tread plate. I just spent an afternoon with the angle grinder. I was annoyed at it. Um, so it's totally rock solid, and it's amazing. This one actually plays better than the other at the RBX I did a couple of weeks ago, the one that I put the stereo thing in. And it shouldn't be. It's a stag. But it's just if you build it well. Um, it seems to work very well. These strings are... Something wrong with that string. Doesn't seem to be as bad now. Um, that I've been playing it a little bit. But I think it was... These are just strings I got. They're probably all from different sets from the last 30 years. Doesn't seem to be as... Uh, I noticed that the D string was dead quiet. Uh, it doesn't seem to be doing that anymore. Maybe a wee bit quieter. So the way I'm... Now, seeing as this is the first uh, active bass I've actually owned... Um, look at the colour of it, though. There's an acoustic that was done at about the same time as this, which kind of looks similar, but I mean... They don't look as I said as I said earlier. That's so why I got this. Um, the guy just gave me it actually with the bass. I think I was because I, he was quite amused. I was pure in tears when I bought the got my ZZB bass. So I'll try to sell this as well. Nobody wanted it. Do you want it? So it was, I think he was expecting me to haggle on the other bass. I didn't. There's the money. I have a bass. Do you want know this Yamaha? Um, it had been smashed up. Um, so there, there was cracks in the neck in the body, like a few of them. Um, and I basically glued and put deck screws through it and then painted it and then it hung my garage for a year because I didn't really want this base. Um, but this, I've got used to the shape. I think it's playing that one last week really gave me the oomph to actually do something about it. Um, it has been kicking about 
gens for the last six months. But um, Scott Pure poo pooed the shite. It was like really, really offensive about it because it doesn't have the correct neck on it and it had cracks in the body that are filled and well, you can't sell that. And it's like, why? It's rock solid. But anyway, I'm going to keep it. I think. It doesn't have the the original bridge was missing a um a saddle on it as well. It's the same bridge that I put on the the wee red base. Uh, so this is just a I think this is actually the stag one off the same base that the the neck came off. Um, just a standard P base type bridge, a wee bit thicker than a standard P base type bridge. Got the original pickups and the original wiring. Um, I say it's got a battery in it, so it's nine volt. Uh, there, I still haven't made a need to make a, a cover for it. It's just held in with tape. Yeah. So, active bases, how to use an active base to make it sound like a P base, because obviously you can see all I like P bases really pretty much are P bases with different shapes. So, that, that's the neck pickup, I suppose, front pickup. And then that's both pickups on. And then that's the back pickup. So we just put that straight to the front pickup, just this one. And then the bass boost is something you don't get in a normal P bass. So if you just use the treble and put it down, you get your tone control. Um, I think that D string is a bit quieter just because I think the string is older and more dead than the other ones. Yeah, it's not as loud. Yeah, so. But yeah, obviously you can turn the bass. I'm going to turn the bass down. Bet it goes damn treble if you put it to the bridge pickup. See, these are not really sounds that I would uh, have much use for. normally have it. Ooh. And the bass boost. things how do you justify keeping another bass and it's like well it's a moderately mid-rangey Yamaha Yamahas are always good so it's like you know it's like step up this would be the one that you would get people would be looking at the sort of second bottom of the range Squire a sort of classic vibey one and then obviously you would go to the Yamaha and it's like a Formula One machine compared to it you know it's just like it's just better in every way but um it doesn't look like a P bass it's the look that gets me but I mean once you once it's painted this colour it gives it it, it, it's gone from being something I don't like to something I do like. Um. And I guess there might be a session I'm in, invited to play on. Or something where basically I need a super bass. So it's basically like a super strap, but it's a bass. I might need active and 24 frets because none of the other basses I have are. Um, whether that happens or not, I don't know. I would totally play this. I would gig it.
possible. Bass is so amazing fun to play. Um, one of the reasons I did bass speak is just because one of the best things about bass is assuming you're playing bass and guitar at the same time, I I don't know. I, if you're starting out in any way, I've said this before, if you're starting out or you've been playing for six months or something like that on the guitar, buy a bass. Um, just because it's a similar sort of thing, I, I'm totally blessed with the fact that I learned them both kind of at the same time, as in six months playing the guitar, joined a band that already had three guitarists and a drummer, uh, and borrowed a bass, and then that night I had only played the bass for ten minutes ever before I went into the studio that night, and I was the only one that could play it, therefore I became a bass player. Um, there's just so much... But that's what I keep thinking the more I play guitar, the more I learn on the bass because it's everything's kind of transferable. It's oh, the scales are the same and stuff. Um, but it's, it's, once you get to a certain point on the bass where you're kind of sort of semi competent on it, you'll find that um, everything you learn on the guitar you can transfer onto bass and vice versa. So I mean, I'm noticing really what I've you don't really do the same way in guitar is stopping, like kind of. There's so much control you've got. Bit less treble, bit more bass. That bit, that bit's blue. Always my favourite bits in the JPEX guitars is for some reason in these bits. I don't know. I suppose it's kind of like having an armpit fetish or something, isn't it? But I mean, I don't know. Sometimes something about those bits. But I mean, I'm amazed. I'm always amazed at these stag basses. I've gone through so many of them. The problem, they kind of look a bit like this, actually. They're just unexciting to look at. Um, but Technically, they're fantastic, and if you're looking at, I've actually got one through next door. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to save it because someone's put P bass type he tuners on it. Um, but I mean, they're, they're they are solid. I don't even know if it's got a model name. I think they just made it. You can get them under other brands. It was just basically it's your how cheap can we make a good bass? Bang, there you go. Um, but it's got this. It's this. When I say this design, I mean it's like you know the twenty four frets. Uh, because it's this neck and a sort of high accessy this sort of kind of shape but I mean I don't know like anything else the more you look at the shape of a guitar especially an odd looking one you end up liking it um it's just a case of uh, the initial everyone's initial reaction to any modern shape any different shape guitar is oh um oh, I don't know but you get used to it. um you know something even the that I, when I first got that I thought it was hideous and then the more I look at it I think it's just absolutely stunning Just like that. I mean, that that's not complicated stuff, but I mean it's like you just need that the drums and you're already at three quarters of the song, really, aren't you?
that's just playing along with the drums. It's like another thing. One of the things you've got to do when you're a bass player. Well, the bass player, because the, the kind of guitarists and the rest of the band tell you what the notes are, the drummer tells you when to play. So, boom, ch, boom, ch, boom, boom. So, as a starter. There's so many great bass groups that aren't actually that difficult to do. Um, I'm going to try and do the... I can't even remember the guy's name is now. The MC Hammer song, but the original guy did it, Ricky something. Um, um, I can't remember it. So I don't know what much to say about this. I mean, I've had this. I've got this exact same problem I have with this as I do with uh, my hair's looking quite. Um, yeah, I don't think I was using any different sort of conditioner. It's just, it's, it's just dried well. Yeah. Yeah, but I've got the same problem with that with the RBX as I do with the Ibanez, which is a sort of equivalent of it. Whereas I just the shape does not inspire me. With the painting on it, it, it does. Um, I just think that's totally cool. I don't even know what you would... I don't know, think, I don't know if they, they had names back at this point. It's just called the Malcolm G. Yamaha base. But um, I don't know. Again, looking at them, these... You don't get the f impact of the J-Pax guitars until you get used to looking at them. There's an awful lot more to it than what's the initial pure... Whoa, it's like the more you look at it and then you start to, and it, they, they seem to change colour depending on how you look at it because you go, oh, it's green. There's not really that much of this that's green.